Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Philip George, and on behalf of the Center for Religious Debate, I'll be your moderator for this debate. I want to welcome you and thank you for, the great, for attending the Great Debate Series. The Great Debate Series was designed to give both Christians and Muslims a chance to present and or defend their positions on various Islamic and Christian topics. But rather than simply agree or disagree, or even make concessions or compromises in our faiths, as is commonly practiced in interfaith dialogue, our method puts each side's belief under rigorous scrutiny. Opening statements cannot be taken at face value. After rebuttals, cross-examinations, and sometimes audience questioning, not this one necessarily, every neatly constructed case will be tested to prove its validity. The Center for Religious Debate and all those who participate with us prefer that arguments be thoroughly tested by critical examination. Commonly in interfaith dialogue, cases for or against a particular topic are accepted at face value without any assessment because each side is merely expected to present their view without analysis. As I've mentioned, today's topic is not merely an abstract subject of theology or scripture, but two lives, two lives that claim that they have been transformed, converted by God, by their respective faiths. Each of us, following our faith traditions, have been influenced by others. This week, Jews and Christians celebrate Passover and Easter and believe on their faith based on their scriptures, but also the generations of testimony gone through the centuries. And Muslims believe because of not only the Quran, but also because of the generations of testimony that have gone on for 1400 years. And so we have two people who claim that they have a change in their life, and they are going to present their lives as testimony to the, cha the powerful change that God can bring from their respective religion. Today, first we'll be hearing from Ali al-Sharif. He was born in the Sudan. He was raised Muslim in a Muslim family. But 14 years ago, he became a Christian, transformed by Jesus Christ. Today, he works in Canada in Christian media productions. And he has been engaged in discussions, presentations, and debates. He has debated notable Islamic scholars like Shabir Ali, perhaps the most notable, and others, uh, especially in Africa, uh, where his heart is, where he is from. And then you'll hear from Sadiq Abdul Malik. He was uh, born and raised in the Bronx, something that he has in common with me, believe it or not. And he converted to Islam seven years ago. Today, he preaches Islam uh, as he's an evangelist for Islam. It's called a die. He is a die for the faith, for his faith. He uh, is frequently on radio doing discussions and debate on issues of faith. This is his fourth public presentation or defense or debate. Uh, yesterday uh, was perhaps his second, and uh, so we're privileged to have this one, his fourth, and we hope to have many more with him. Let me quickly explain the format for this exciting time. As I've said, this is not just a mere subject, but these are two people who place their lives, their testimonies, under the microscope here before you, for you to examine, and for each other to examine. Each will make a 20-minute presentation, which will be their opening statement, and that will basically be the testimony of their conversion. After that, we'll take a brief pause to uh, rewind the camp, rewind the tapes. But then they'll discuss what they gained from their conversions, what they gained from their conversions. So the topic today is, uh, what did I gain from my conversion? So that is sort of the heart of it during those 10 minutes. Then there will be a period of cross-examination. There will be four questions for each of uh, the debaters today. There will be a minute to ask each question. There will be two minutes to obtain an answer. And there will be one minute for a commentary on the answer. So without further ado, I present to you first 
Ali El Sharif, who will make his opening 20 minute statement about his conversion, and then we'll hear from Sadiq Abdul Malik. I uh, first greet you in the name of Jesus, and I'm honored to be here today to be a witness for my Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in many debates, you can actually discuss theology, and also you can argue doctrines, you can debate history, but you can never argue or debate or discuss life transformation, especially if it is about my life transformation, because it is my story, and it is me who is the witness. After 14 years believing in Jesus Christ, today I could say that he has changed and transformed my life. He has transformed my thinking and my attitudes. In the next few minutes, I will tell you my story. This is the story that tells you and show you the reasons why I left Islam and the reasons why I became Christian and also the reasons why I am today, after 14 years, I am a Christian. My life started with a very special, in a very special way. By the way, English is not my language. I speak eight languages, and English is the third language. If you hear some of words, you might just uh, try to understand. I might glaze some French words or Arabic words. Don't worry about that. I grew in a a Muslim family, my dad was a sheikh. He is uh, also the sultan of, of my clan in Sudan. And one thing he had in mind that I would be his inheritance to be the sultan. I didn't go to school. They sent me to Quranic school. At three and a half years, I memorized three quarters of the Quran. And at 10, I memorized the whole Quran. Still, sometimes I pray that I forget it, but still it is there. And I know that is why God has put me here and he gave me this ministry. My dad died. I went to school. And I started with questions that let me out of Islam by the end of the day. These questions I discussed and I talked with many people, especially Islamic scholars and sheikhs and imams. I hope today Brother Sadiq Abdel Malik might give me some answers to these questions, and I hope so. These questions actually let me leave Islam without turning back. The first question that came to me, I was in the high school, and all of you, and if you don't know today, you should know that every Muslim in this world has to face Mecca, the Qibla, in order to pray their five prayers or any other prayers. And one day, I prayed in a wrong direction. I was in the second year of high school. It was at night, and then in the morning, my brothers and sisters were laughing at me 